back the camera's on focus now. I love this 4K camera. When you're deep in the spirit like now, this is the best time to dive into God's word. This is the best, oh, I can feel God in my spirit. I can feel the Holy Ghost deep in me. I loose it to you. All these videos I've made, Father, I just release the knowledge to your, your people, your body. Whatever I can release, I release it to you. Thank you for healing my scars and taking the band-aid off. Thank you for not giving me what my sin deserves. I come broken before you, helpless before you, like a baby, naked before you. You see every part of me. There's nothing hidden. You see my intentions. And I just yield to you, Father. Break the power of Satan right now and the death of the spirit off my two brothers, off my three spiritual brothers. And I loose the hand of God to break evil off them and to touch them. I decree, declare, establish, loose the might of God in Jesus' name. I still got all this coffee, boy. There are certain timings that trigger a certain flow. That calls forth a different channel. There's channels to God. There's you have a frequency. Holy Spirit. There's different channels to God's sound, to his music, to what he's trying to get across. The Father loves music. That's why human beings love music. There's music amongst people. The arguing ceases. Hatred. Music is powerful. It liberates. You carry the music of the gospel. This liberates. The kingdom, the angels, heaven, the saints. Mission. To know this is the reward. To know these insights. Is greater than how big your mansion will be in heaven. Okay. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, meaning only you, only thee, unto. Unto is giving unto all yourself and giving it unto, placing it on God's tabernacle, placing it on God's throne. Placing it on God's word and promise unto the Lord. It's a very powerful definition and meaning and value and insight and perception in it. Those aren't just words. There's spheres in those words and there's access to revelation in those words and there's heights in those words that cause you to walk on pillars to experience God in higher ways. Mm. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. We forgetting in the word. We finna get in this word. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, I really love the Amplified Version. I feel amplified when I read it. Words are powerful. It said amplified, so... That opened up amplification in my spirit. That's why vocabulary words are so powerful. I need to get a vocabulary book. New words open up new dimensions, new power, new meaning, new value in your life. And a new language to worship God. Words are a part of language. And sound is a part of that. Which ties into music, choreography. Every dark chord. Archangel Michael is really good at cutting off dark chords. A lot of times the enemy will sin. Like when you see, you played a lot of, you got to be careful what you play. There's nothing wrong. You play innocent video games, but now the games, these games are demonic. These games are very twisted. You know how they shoot evil like chords at you? Well, demons do that in the spirit. They know when the frequency is high and the power is high and the fire is high. And so they'll try, they know they can't come near you. They'll try to shoot some, but Michael is really good 
when you learn how the when the Holy Spirit shows you how to use the angels and what they specialize in, like you won't even much have to do spiritual warfare. The angels will do it for you. They'll rip principalities apart and they'll bring you treasure. They're waiting on your command. So Michael is really good at cutting off dark cords. Sword, the blue fire. It's not just that there's many different angles and aspects that, but he's really good at cutting off dark cords. So you say, I loose, we loose Archangel Michael now to cut every dark cord. I just saw him in the spirit cutting that cord. Blue light flash. But because I said that, that's all he's going to do. Now I say, I release Holy Spirit fire back to the center of this dark cord. I just saw Holy Spirit fire enter it and go back. Enter it and go back to the center. Now it's going to burn them up because I said that. That's all that's going to happen. Learn to take it deeper. Where you hurt a devil. You hurt a demon. When you fight principalities, I'm not going to teach on that. Because I don't have enough knowledge. I don't, the inside, I fought principalities, but I'm not going to be teaching heresy. When you fight principalities, that's different. You have to submit to God and let him fight for you. In the first heaven, I know this for a fact. In the first heaven, we have dominion. If a demon, I can rip a demon wherever I go. I rip a devil apart. There's legalistics in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit will let you know if he has legal rights here. They have legal rights here. How to break this. But I can rip any demon in the first heaven. But when principalities, I have to submit to God and let him fight. That's a different story. But I'm not even going to, I ain't even going to go there. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this one because this ties into a parable. Give in complete secrecy. There's a spiritual giving of secrecy. There's an intention of secrecy. What's behind the heart? The intention is everything. The intention is everything behind the heart. But one of my favorite parables so far, according to my knowledge and where I stand with God, everything of the word of God is my favorite. But right now, I don't know how to say it word for word, but it's a parable where they had a lantern or something. She had dough in it. And as she was walking, the dough was being released from the lantern. When she got home, it was empty and had no idea. So you carry God, the word, all your abilities, all your power, all your potential, all your gifts, all your knowledge, all your videos you make, all your YouTube videos you upload. And you, you're you giving away all your knowledge to people. You work at this job for a year. You poured out your heart. You gave everybody the knowledge of revelation. You uplifted everybody. You elevated everybody. You moved in the spirit to higher dimensions. You increased your capacity to think, to be. You educated yourself. And it's like you don't even know you did any of that. That, as a secrecy, that will give you, it says, and, and that secrecy, and secrecy is not talking about a human secrecy. Divine secrecy is different. But in that secrecy, you will, you will find the secrets of God. Mysteries. You will find greater mysteries of God that can be uncovered. But in that secrecy, you will find secrets. That my God, when you gain these, you used to worry about how big your mansion is going to be in heaven, how many crowns you're going to get, how many rewards you're going to get because you were this successful spiritually. When you gain these secrets... That alone is, mm. I would recommend you have your own personal walk. A lot of Christians, I don't just, I never disagree with anybody. I never, ever, whether you're right or wrong, Jesus, I can't find anywhere in the Bible where Jesus said, you're wrong, you're wrong. Because when you say that, you're releasing a spirit of rejection. And in that rejection, you're loosing a spirit to bind that person. You're releasing all the things, people that didn't have a good grow up and a good childhood. They were always rejected, denied. You're releasing rejection and denial when you say you're wrong. Even, even if the person is wrong. Your job truly when you evangelize is not even to get people to figure out or get people right this or tell people what they need to do. Your job is to allow the Holy Spirit to touch them. Unity will cause that. I've touched many people of God with Christ and God, uh, their spiritual barrier lowered their defense their pride lowered because i agreed with them even though they were wrong and because their spiritual defense lowered god gave me a word and i was able to hit their heart with it because of unity this is a key you can touch anybody with christ like this you can bring anybody to jesus like this the power of agreement god is always right he's never wrong so when you're worried you're going to be wrong you're operating in fear which worry is a type of fear so you're Let's get in the word of God. We about to get in the word of God for two hours. This is the third video I made back to back. I'm in the flow right now. I'm in the flow. Nothing can stop me. The devil can't stop me. 
I love, I love what God's doing in life because you can't explain what God's doing in your life. You feel, you got knowledge, you got wisdom, but you can't, you can't explain God. You can experience God, you can express God, you can know God, you can have understanding of the Father who He is, but you can't explain Him. You can't explain what He's doing in your life. And when you try, it frustrates you. I can't explain. This God is all over the place. Like He's doing this, connecting this. He's always like, mm. and as I'm doing this, demonic powers are being chopped into pieces. God, I carry a very high level of authority in spiritual warfare, the spiritual warfare. When you claim what God has given you, you're not bragging. You're glorifying the Father and it's elevating you. So demons know not to mess with me. Principalities know when I walk up in the building, I'm going to hit principality. I got Christ in me. Demons, principalities know this one ain't just, he know this one ain't somebody we going to mess with. This, this ain't no punk right here. Okay? It's like how you have different... Levels of authority at your job. When the general manager comes in, I don't care how many employees got an attitude, how many people, oh, well, this one's close to God, this one, the devil, I don't care how many people got attitude, I don't care how issues, they submit, they respect his authority. Same thing in the spirit realm. When your authority arises, you get a new coat of honor, you get a new coat of authority that nobody can take with you. So when you walk spiritually, the demons that are around people, they tremble, they respect your authority, they don't mess with you. I love that. It's amazing how God elevates us. What is man that you made him a little lower than angels, but you crowned him with glory and honor? What is man that you're mindful of, a man that you care for? But God has given me great revelation to intimacy. Look, look, look. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. There are levels to the fear of the Lord. You don't fear God because you say you do. You want to, but you can't. Only the Holy Spirit can give that gift to you. Nobody else can give you the fear of the Lord. Being smart, being an entrepreneur, being a multimillionaire, being healthy, writing books, being successful, being famous, speaking in front of crowds of thousands and changing lives, nothing. That means nothing. Only the Holy Spirit can give that to you. And I'm starting to have a deeper reverence for the Word of God, and it is elevating me like 10 times. The Lord told me I'm elevating you at a 10 times speed. Not a 2 times, not a 4 times, not an 8 times, but a 10 times speed. You know, back in the day when they prophesied, oh, I think, I don't know if it was in Revelations, but, 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 oh my gosh, I love your word. I cannot, I'm so sorry, Father, for any time that I did not dedicate my life to your word. Now that I've dedicated my life to the word of God, and I stay in the God, God's word, and I live in it when I wake up, when I, I can't even, this is all I can do. If you read your Bible every day, and you dedicate your word just to know God's word, don't worry about anything else, how you're going to be famous, how you're going to be successful, how you're going to be money. Just dedicate your life to the word of God. I can't even explain it. I can't anoint you. I can't even prophesy this. I can't even speak in tongues about it. This is all I can do. I can only express it. That's it, Lord. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. In from the beginning but the depths at the beginning they get hit with it and they go further and it gets lighter and lighter but the realm gets heavy and heavy of light of potency of purity I love the word of God because it when you go to higher power you can go to higher power in God which I've done and still have a lot of demonic baggage on you flesh flesh the flesh is demonic bottom line don't mean you got a demon in your bottom line. Your flesh is demonic. Your carnal mind is demonic. It's enmity, enmity with God. But as you get pulled the water, you start operating in super high spheres, but so purely. God is pure. See, that's how you'll know. That's why you won't be deceived by antichrist, by this world, by false prophets. The purity of God will detect. So that you're, I'm, I'm going to go until I finish this coffee. And it's going to take, this coffee is strong, so. But I'm going to go until the Lord says we finished. It's electricity all in my room. I can see electricity. I can actually, see, before you just saw the electricity. But now you're actually using your spiritual touch. And you're touching it. So you're receiving its power. Before you just saw it. But now you're using your spiritual touch, your spiritual senses. 
Now you touch it, now you receive. Ooh. Okay, that's too powerful right there. I don't think I can go any further. I don't, wanna, I don't know what just happened, but that was powerful. So that your charitable acts will be done in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret. There's a scene that takes place in secret that causes the reward openly. It's a two-sphere thing. And this is bigger than, oh, God's going to give me money. Just remember, stop. Forget about physical things. Forget about physical items. Start focusing on spiritual items. Spiritual realms. Spiritual portals. Spiritual gates. See everything. Not like you're going to make more money. A new gate's going to open up in heaven. Not you're going to get promoted at your job. You're going to go to a higher mountain in the spirit. That's true promotion. These demons are so weak. They don't want me releasing this stuff. So matter of fact, I send an atomic bomb to every devil in the North Hemisphere, the spirit of my mind coming against me. I loose Michael with the rays of God's light to shine on them demons. Yes, I'll be seeing them demons screaming. See, so I'm seeing now in the spirit, Lord, show me there are all these demons that set up, that try to set up amongst you. And you're elevating you here, you're getting deeper here, you're going here, but you're not really just necessarily moving into the position forward into the advancement of the kingdom because there's kind of like barricades. So as I'm releasing this, I'm seeing in the spirit and I'm breaking these barricades. The Holy Spirit tells you what to release on this demon, what this devil's name is. Like, you know how you can gain intel on this commander, this general, his weaknesses, his strengths. Well, the Holy Spirit is your intel. When you're led by the spirit, he'll show you. I love the fire ministry carry I'm going to. This man of God, oh my gosh. Not this man, but the God that lives inside him, the Holy Spirit lives inside him. Like, he's not failed one time. Every time we had a demonic encounter, we had, there's many of them. We've had many angelic visitations, visitations with Christ, miracles, and many. It's a deliverance ministry. So you see people throw up all the time, things like that. You see crazy stuff, demons. Every time, no demon has ever been victorious against his Holy Spirit. Never, not one time. <laughs> He was victorious every time. There were many times we had to wait. See, warfare isn't just, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just, thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this ministry. Remember, when I gave up my PlayStation 4, when I gave up all my video games, because I remember I was playing my PlayStation 4, I still have games now, but I don't I don't have a desire really to play. It's just like, you know, when I try, it's like, and these games are evil and demonic. I don't even really have a desire. But I remember I was playing my PlayStation 4, and I love that thing. I used to collect trophies. I love trophies, and God knows it. So he always rewards me. Like, instead of gaining trophies and games now, I gain it through education and through Christ now. I gain heavenly, you know, stack up heavenly treasure, not earthly heaven, uh, not earthly treasure with moth corrupts and where thieves break in and steal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, wow. Thank you for the Bible. The most powerful thing you have as a Christian is the Word of God, and we don't even realize it. Why does every pastor, every minister just speak so much? And why are they always speaking the word of God? Because that's everything. But the, I remember the Holy Spirit. This time the Holy Spirit didn't speak from my belly or in my mind. He spoke to me in the wind on the left side of my mind. He spoke to me in the wind. He says, I did not call you to be 80%. When I was playing my PlayStation 4, I did not call you to be 80%. So I sold my PlayStation, $100, gave it to the pawn shop. The same day me and my mother got into an argument. I was on the street. Called my mom, asked if she can come pick me up. I saw nobody. She's like, where are you at? I said, I'm going to try to find somebody, see what location I'm at. There was this guy, this apostle. He was at Jack in the Box on a three-minute lunch. Not even a three-minute, a one-minute lunch break smoking a cigarette. I got his number, told him about Jesus. We interacted with the Holy Spirit, and I received his phone number the same day. And he called me a couple times. I kept denying, but he kept calling me. I answered. Then I began. To, I was introduced to this man of God in the mentorship. God gave me this ministry when I sacrificed everything. And what I've gained in this ministry, I will be good for the rest of my life on earth and on heaven. I got so many prophecies, so many words, that, that wasn't even just it. So many encounters, but I don't even know how to explain what I've gained in this ministry. I will be good for the rest of my life on this earth. I will be set forever by what I've gained in the Lord in this. But then it goes even deeper because the word of God says obedience it's better than sacrifice. Sacrifice will give you everything, but obedience 
I'm gonna show you everything. Y'all ain't ready for that. The Lord is good, a strength and stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows, he recognizes. He knows, he recognizes, cares for, and understands fully. Cares for and understands fully. Those who take refuge and trust in him. You ever feel that inner love in your heart? See, evolution theorists, scientists, they discover things all day long, but they don't know. There's an unassurance in their soul and spirit for the ones that don't believe. But we in Christ, we have an assurance, a security beyond all the protection systems of earth, a knowing that God is alive, that heaven is my home. There's a knowing. Even when we get tested, our faith gets tested, there's a deep knowing that we have that unbelievers don't have. There's a security we have that unbelievers don't. They have all these breakthroughs, all these wonderful breakthroughs in evolution, all these wonderful leaps, all this wonderful knowledge, but they're completely broke and impoverished. So we, we're going to go out there and touch them, love on them, show them Jesus, show them the fire of God, show them the knowledge of the Lord. We're going to bring them to Christ. Can I tell you something? God wants you to live in the highest dimension of heaven. God wants you to have all your gifts so high you can't even take it. God wants to take you higher than you can imagine. God wants to take you deeper than you can begin to comprehend. God wants to give you more than, he can, than you can ask for. I love the Psalms. I've read the Psalms more than anything because the Psalms, that is an intimacy realm. So far in my walk with God, I've discovered the most powerful thing and everything about God, his ways, what he gives is the most powerful, but intimacy. Intimacy is the leader. Intimacy is the leader. If you can dedicate your life to being intimate to the Holy Spirit, finding new ways to be romantic with Christ and crying to the Lord and bringing joy, bringing flowers to him, writing poems to him, loving on him. And that's, see, that's all I can do. I can't tell you. I can't prophesy. I can't speak in tongues. I can't even decree or declare. I can only do this. That's a delightful expression. That's it. That's all I can do. So I clap loud. Demonic strongholds are going to be broken. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you. I love grace. See, this it amplify, it tells you deeper about grace. A lot of times we don't study the words we read in the Bible. We don't study their links, their measure. Like a lot of people that are really wise in the Lord, they go to the Greek and they study different languages of the word because they know the power of words. And when you tap into the word, the sphere of creation, which God created the world by words, the promises, everything is a word. Life is a word. Promotion is a word. Creation is a word. God is a word. Heaven is a word. It's so, mm, for it is by grace. Grace. Grace is God's trace. The holy lace. There's a rhythm. There's a rhyming to these words that trigger a melody god has also gifted me truly with music i listen to music i love music i get in the spirit through music i get in the presence through the word get in the anointing we got three or more people I'm noticing that taking notes of that when do I get in the anointing? You're anointing, but you're not in the anointing to the platform. It's the platform where the anointing comes. I'm still growing in all this. But look, it is for, for it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, God's remarkable compassion and favor. So God's grace, he's pouring out compassion and favor on you. 
despite how good or bad you've been, because that's who he is. You don't necessarily receive it or feel it because the sin cuts you. It's not God cutting you, not God uh, 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 punishing you like people think. No, it's the sin. I love what the word of God says. Your afflictions are punishing you. Okay, I just heard a rake, not in the spirit, but physically. And I just got intel and that rake, like something happened in the spirit. See, when you release your whole neighborhood, it gets blessed. God has you where he wants you for a reason. My whole neighborhood is blessed. And as you get deep in the presence like this, you want to get deep in the word. And then after that, that's a really good time just to walk in your neighborhood or go wear a Christian t-shirt or just, you don't want to be greedy with God's presence. You want to share it. my brother again anybody that's watching me and knows me if I ever denied your phone call all right the Lord just cut me off I'm tired of I'm not gonna do that yes God mm. and this salvation is not of yourself not through your own effort but it is the undeserved gracious gift from God not as a result of your works nor your attempts to keep the law nor your attempts to keep the law not as a result all the gifts of God it's not as a result of your works you get rewarded for working you get rewarded there's a difference between rewards and gifts okay God crowns your efforts he rewards your efforts he rewards your perseverance but there's gifts that rightfully belong to you because of who you are, not what you've done, not what you will do, not because you're successful, not because you were faithful to church and nobody else wasn't, not because you successfully went on a 30-day fast. There's, there's rewards in that, but gifts are different. Yet in all these things, what? Allison courses. Good to know. Holy Spirit's really taken me into a time of, there's angels. There's actually angelic portals, not just angels, but angelic portals now. Um, the Lord's taken me into a, a new phase in my life and I'm an education. I want to build a resume to God, not to man or earth. So instead of getting trophies and accomplishments and games or carnal things, do it with God. Holy Spirit, I love the Holy Spirit. I'm rising, but there's like an inward dwelling I'm seeing, an inward dwelling I'm seeing. The more you release, the more God releases. So as you do these videos, you talk about what you're seeing, you talk about what God is saying, and you release it without being afraid, God will release more and more and more and more. You can go forever and ever and ever and ever. ever. I know you feel the presence of God. I'll lose it to you. You better feel the presence of God on my video. I don't play. When, when, when I make videos, when I do production, I'm not, we're going to get a million views. We're going to get here. No, the presence of God will be felt. People, I put a demand on that, and I demand that. I, there will be no, none of that. Now, if it's because of your doubt, a lot of people, they go to church, and the man of God is declaring, the powerful man of God who walks in size wonders, he declaring it's going to happen, and it is happening, but because of your doubt, it's not happening to you. Not because it's not happening. It's happening all around you to other people, but not to you because of your doubt. <laughs> Is that wonderful and splendor? Ah, Jesus, I love you. Check this out. Check this out. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. Instead of thinking about your weaknesses, your flaws, replace that. Replace that with the word. He died for that. Jesus died for my sin. He died for my lust. He died for my pain. He died for my agony. And I'm more than a conqueror. You have to learn how to repeat the word of God over and over and over. Repeat it. Repetition causes cycles. Cycle causes accelerations and equilibriums around you. And man, you ain't ready for the next part. I got the next part, but I can't release it. You ain't ready for that. 
Please be more spiritual. Stop being so religious. Get spiritual for Christ. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will tell you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Get spiritual. God created the stars. He created the moon. He created earth. He cre The word of God says, I created evil. I created good for me. I created hell. He created, God created everything. So to have knowledge on everything, to understand everything in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, you have revelation understanding on all things. Okay? No, you don't study voodoo. You don't study all that. But you get spiritual. That's evil stuff. You get spiritual. I'm a very, I'm always, I made a vow to God. I'm very, I'm very careful. I don't promise God anymore. Because I've actually, I've broken promises before. I'm not supposed to bring that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not bringing up the past. I've never, I've never, I've never broken a promise to God. Because Lord, don't, don't, you don't stop bringing up the past. When God forgives you, stop bringing up the past. Stop it. Because it'll reactivate the past. And it's very dangerous. And I didn't realize how dangerous it was until I elevated in the Lord. And it's dangerous. I'm pure and holy before God. I'm forgiven and redeemed. My sin has been washed. I'm walking in perfection because Christ is perfected. Mm. Yet in all these things, we're more than a conqueror. You're Alexander Great. Alexander Great. Study him, his spirit, his movement. He conquered all the regions and everything. You're greater than a conqueror. You want to conquer things, and so you'll spend so much time, money, energy, efficiency, effort on conquering, but you're already greater than a conqueror because your identity, who you are in Christ. Overwhelming victory. He didn't just give you victory. He gave you overwhelming victory. Do not judge others. I love what the Amplified Version says. Do not judge others. Self-righteously. And you will not be judged. A lot of times we're afraid to judge divinely. Not judge as in sentence people, but judge according to the measure, the situation, and what's taking place. And we don't do that, so we don't tap into the, see, there's the justice of God, there's the equity of God, there's the there's the, the court system of God. You have to, But you have to learn judgment. And when God's talking about don't judge people, that's talking about carnally, self-righteously, comparing. When you compare yourself, you're actually judging. When you think, when you when you sentence people, you're judging them. That's not what he's talking about. But divine judging is judging a situation. You know, this person, this spirit, it's because of the gossip in their life that is hindering them. And if they don't stop this evil, you're supposed to do that. A lot of us think we're not supposed to. So we hinder understanding and getting the revelation operating in the courtroom systems of God's judgment. Okay? So we don't operate like kings. Mm. If you would have told me 10 years ago I'd be preaching the word of God, I'd be on fire for Jesus, I'd stop doing drugs, stop watching porn, stop having sex, stop masturbating, stop playing video games all day, stop. Uh, I would have told you, uh, I just don't, I mean, yeah, but I just don't see that. I just don't, there ain't no way. If you would have told me I would have. I would have stopped cussing. I was going to stop drinking. I was going to stop doing pills. I was going to stop smoking weed. I was going to go to church and be crying for Jesus. I would have been like, yeah, I just don't see that. But Jesus saved me when I was blind. I was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. Like singing to Jesus right now. I feel like singing to Jesus right now. I don't think, and I'm not going to try to sing Jesus so I can try to get in his presence according to being led by the Spirit within my body. I feel. Keep going. We eating breakfast now. See, now we getting somewhere in the spirit. See, that's why people, you're supposed to love road trips. Three, four hour drives. You're supposed to see yourself like that in the spirit. You pray and as you drive on a road trip, you go to new destinations, new locations are unlocked, new discoveries, new accomplishments, new history is revealed, new people are touched, new souls are accumulated. Come on, man. Ain't nothing like a road trip in the Lord, brother. My character is changing. Like Jesus, his personality in you, he's trying to there's multiple infinite uh, characters of God and personalities all at one time. And I'm gaining new personalities, new characters as I learn to absorb. I'm, I have this spirit of absorption. I can absorb other people's, their gifts, their ability, as I adore them and love them, as I see the Holy Spirit in them. And bottom line, if you've made the decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit's in you. It's that simple. Being freed of guilt and sin and made acceptable to God. We're acceptable to God because of who we are in Christ. When you first, you're trying to focus on your achievements instead of who you are in Christ. You are acceptable to God. God delights himself in you. He is pleased with you. He has given you all the blessings. 
He has defeated sin, sickness, death, poverty. See, a lot of times we only base what we hear, and that's dangerous to do. We hear, we watch TV that people in Africa are poor, people in this lanes are poor, people in there are poor. So we base, and then we think we get a bad judgment of God, of our life, of comparison, of sympathy, and we get twisted in that. But we don't know. Have you been to those countries? I watch a lot of ministers that go to those countries, and they say they have more joy, more unity, more love, more riches than anyone that you can imagine. I was watching somebody, and he was saying that, and he was explaining it. So don't just go by what you heard. That's very dangerous. Study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. When you show yourself approved, what's that quote? That quote's popping up in my head. A lot of things while you're talking will pop up in your head. He says, when the, what does it say? When the teacher is ready, the master will appear. You're not ready because you say you're ready. You're ready when God sees you're ready. What does it say? What is it? When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. That's a quote and that's powerful. See, these philosophers of ancient times, they were powerful because philosophy, it has nothing to do with demonic, evil, gods, deities. Philo what ph true philosophy is, is expressing inside, expressing thought, not just thinking, not just speaking through intellect. It's expressing. Like, if I just start, and I do this a lot, and I have gained artifacts in Christ. I've gained memorials. I've gained not even any kind of jewelry. I've gained monument. This is a monument of Christ. You'll gain monumental status through that, through the philosophy. Through it, but it, what it really is, the truest form and depths, God is expression. So if I just start saying, I feel I can't be wrong. There's no limits on intent. Don't even think. Don't even talk. Don't even try. Just flow. I'm going to show you in a minute. We, we can, you can exercise this whenever you want. So coffee, right? The bean, the grain. Okay, so that's the sand, but... If the moment of the movement was to control, wait a minute, okay, so no, it was because. So I'm looking at the personality trait, the phone, the Bible, that's the book. So the code was the inscription. See, you do that outwardly trying, but when you go deep in your mind, which I'm about to do right now, it'll be a whole nother ball game. So the intentions of my mind and my soul to my heartbeat, to the blood rate, to the capacity, to the breathing, to the oxygen, to the molecules. If it was not the son of it, that there was a worry about, was the fear, was it the Lord, was it the ascension, was the power, was it the Akashic Records, was it the diocese. As I can feel it while I do that. Okay, you're releasing divine utterances. It's okay. Oh, okay, so I'm starting to figure you out, camera. You get blurry after a while. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, did I judge you too soon? I apologize. Forgive me. Hallelujah. I'm a photographer. I love 4K. I love HD. <sighs> yeah, we eating breakfast now. If you're not getting tested, every time you fast, if you're not, or whatever you do, if you're not getting tested in the spirit, or you're not getting stretched, or you're not, you're not going, you're not really growing. You get, oh God, I just got a revelation. Hello? What's up, brother? I'm in my house, bro. We need to hang out for real. You won't regret it. I don't care what you're doing right now. You won't regret it. It'll be better than any weed. It'll be better than any sex. It'll be better than money. I'm not joking around. God is really here. We gotta hang out. Yeah, it's okay if you're drunk. It's okay if you high. It's okay if you want a bunch of tabs right now. You just got to come over because God's moving in your life. And I'm going to make sure he stays moving in your life. And I ain't going to let no devil and no demon stop you. Because you're going to rise in God. You quit doing a lot of things and you're getting closer to the Lord. And I ain't going to let nothing stop that. Yeah, don't worry about nothing. Just come out. But come by yourself. Because you've been chosen by God. Yeah, come by yourself. And just don't bring nobody, nothing else. And we're going to be good. Praise God. I'll loose the angels right now in the dispatch army and the kingdom of heaven to shine on you. And you'll be coming into the glory of God. Just have the reverence, have the respect, and the fear of the Lord. Just honor him while you walk. And he's going he gonna to start speaking to you. I'm going to make sure of that. All right, so you just come over whenever. Oh, we finna walk. We finna pray. We finna get in God's presence. We gonna play a game. We gonna watch a movie, brother. You my best friend. So God wants to invest in you. All right, just come on whenever. All right, amen. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. 
Yeah, you felt that. Brother, I'm... Mm, I felt that. My God! When you touch others with God... It's all, I've been, I, that's what he said. Now, I ain't gonna say that. The Lord don't want me to say that, but... When you get deep in God's presence... Don't evangelize before... You evangelize all the time, but when you get deep in God's presence, deep in the fast... That's when you get, when you get deep in God's word. That's when you go out and you touch people. When you touch others, God, what God, when I just touch that brother, God just touched me like hard. See, God can, he can put his hand and say, I bless you from a distance. But then God can come close and just touch you. And that's what God just did. That's why I jumped like that. Man. I get real gangster in the spirit, for real. I get real gangster in the Holy Ghost. I'm not leaving this video until he knocks on the door because I'm getting deeper in the presence of God by making these videos and I'm not going nowhere. Like God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And I'm going to tell you something right now because now, see, this is good. I'm on a deeper level because I'm starting to feel the fear of the Lord and I'm starting to be humbled like a child. When I get to a childlike stage, that's how I know I've gone somewhere very deep in the, world, in the Lord. And that's what you call spiritual success in Christ. When you become like a child, you can't even think, can't even talk. That's good. That means you've, humble, you've been humble to a child. Now God can speak. Now God can walk around this room and do what he desires because you're not, you don't have, we still have this pride in us even though God is, the more I'm doing this and the more I'm being humble to a child, the more God can do. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things. You get in the spirit to face the spirit. You get in your identity, which is getting in the spirit, to face the spirit. Then the Lord, the Almighty, he will come upon you. Place his hand on you. Begin to declare things to you, speak to you, show you things. which things have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. See, it's the things that what that can't be known, can't be understand, that can only be revealed, uncovered. Mm. I just saw many seals in the spirit spinning and they've been opened. God is approving me. In his review of my life, he's approving me. He's approving me. There's an improvement going on. He's approving me. To be used mightily by him. Mm, and I feel Jesus just shredding through me right now. It does not painful, it doesn't hurt. He's shredding through me. Mm. For the Lord is good. His mercy and his loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness endures to all generations. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you? Whom you have received as a gift. We are recipients of everything that God has, does, is, his being, who he is, all of it. We are recipients. When's the last time you just entered into the mode of receiving? Sit back. I receive all your promise. I receive your glory. Just start receiving. But not just with your words and mind, but in your heart. Your heart has a mind. Your soul has a mind. Now this is a very deep thing. That's not for the secrecy. That's not for the secrets of God, even the mystery. This is a it is sort of a mystery, but this is a deep thought, a thing of God that anybody can know. Anybody can be taught. He said the seed of the soul is in the blood, the blood of Jesus. All life is in the blood. All life is in the blood. All life is in the blood. The crown of the soul is in the blood. When you allow your blood to think, you probably won't be able to handle the power you feel. 
You know what I said? Allow your blood to thank me. You know whose blood you carry? Jesus. Allow your blood to thank me. Don't think. Allow your blood. Allow to thank me. You won't be able to handle his power. But you must handle his power. And that you are not your own property. And you're not your you're not your own. You don't belong to yourself. God has ownership and property. When you start letting him have ownership and property and stop trying to have ownership yourself and property and figure everything out yourself and master everything yourself, you will experience a freedom in your life and in your walk. And in that freedom, you've let go. And because you've let go, God is on the wheel. God doesn't have the will of everybody's life. We say we do. We read it in the word. Oh, God's in control. But we don't really let him have control. We're in control. And don't realize it. Learn to give every piece of yourself to the Lord. Everything you do. Even when you sit on the toilet and I'm not being funny. I'm in the presence of the Lord. I fear God. Even when you're on your toilet. That's God's body. holy and you're pure. God gave me, Lord, I don't know if it's a key or what it is, but God gave me something where my operation is infinitely expressed and I'm able to tap into what I was looking for now whenever I want. Not whenever I have to be led by the Spirit, but He gave me something. And it's just simply keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It revolutionized my life and I thank you for that. I hear, I hear that scripture, my kiss the son lest he be angry. You have to give God a certain honor when he, you're in his presence like this. Or when you, you come before his holiness, you have to give him a certain reverence and honor. You have to. Not because he's mean, not even because he's, because he's God. It is a must. So you kiss him. You know, Everybody kisses hands of men to show them honor, give one feet. Well, you got to learn how to honor God's presence. Grab him by the hand and adore on him. In that he is glorified. And you are brought closer to him. on you. Mm. So then honor and glorify God your life. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. The sun does not shine without me. The stars do not glitter without me. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Who is isn't that good? That's a goodness element in the release of the Lord. When you follow him, you will have the light of life. That is a goodness of the Lord. Now may the God who gives endurance. See, you don't have an endurance. You don't have more endurance than anybody else because of physically, because you work out, because of your productivity, because of your education, because of your accomplishments. God who gives endurance and who supplies encouragement. Friend, don't try to be encouraged. Don't try to be motivated. Call on the Lord. He is your motivation. When you allow God to be everything and more and more, he's able to intimately intertwine himself into you. And one of the reasons why God loves us so much is because he's able to invest God don't invest. God's not interested in perfection. 
because he's perfect. He's attracted to your weakness and he's able to pour his perfection upon that. And he's able to mend with you in a way like none other. And this is a key. If you ever want to enter into his gates, his courts, it tells you right here. Enter his gates, but let me give you us. You can pray for 10 hours. Let me give you something. I could pray for 10 hours. I could speak in tongues for three hours. I could loose the angels at my job for eight hours. But when I sing, listen to me, when I sing to the Holy Spirit, I gain in my song, I gain automatic entrance to his glory. I could pray for eight hours, still not feel the glory. I could prophesy, speak in tongues, know the anointing, all that. But when I sing, I gain automatic entrance. The sound is heard, but the song is received. The sound is heard, but the song is always received. That just ricocheted from my brain. This is getting deep. See, we're eating breakfast now. We're kind of at the end of the breakfast. See, now I'm being stretched. Now I'm growing in my fast. Now my fast is successful. It's not, thank you, Lord. See, God is too good. You thought he was hard on you. You thought he was, you thought, but when you see the greater goodness that comes from the test, it's like you can't compare it. You can't compare it. Mm. I love you, Jesus. Mm. 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 See, now the eyes of God are upon me. I will give thanks and praise the Lord with all my heart. I will tell aloud all your wonders and marvelous deeds. Now, this is a key for all the Christians that are afraid they're going to be wrong. They don't make YouTube videos. They don't talk about God. They're missing out. The devil's all on them. You have to look, look. I will tell aloud of your wonders. You ain't got to be a teacher. Yes, you need to learn the word of God before you teach it. You have to express what God's doing in your life. You have to tell people of the goodness, whether he makes you feel happy, whether he gives you dreams, whether he's just giving you a good job. You have to, you gotta, if that's all, you got to say it over and over and declare. I will tell aloud of your wonders. And marvelous deeds. If you're not telling out loud of God's wonders and marvelous deeds that he's doing in your life, you're tripping. You're tripping. Holy Spirit. Mm -mm -mm. I feel the grasp of your hands take me there. It ain't even your, ooh, I just got the glory on that. It ain't even your song. It's the sound of the Holy Spirit and the melody. You're trying to say good words and think of the words, but the Holy Spirit's trying to release the sound. Come on now. Mm. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That right there will get you in God's, give you, get you a hug from God, get you embrace. That right there gets the embrace of God. There's different movements of God is embrace. Him cherishing you, him adoring you, and you have access to those, but you have to learn what triggers that or what opens that up. Say that again. Oh, Lord. You are my God. Ah, yes, you are. 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 I will exalt you. Mm. I will praise and give. Thanks to your name. For you have done miraculous things, plans formed long, long ago, fulfilled with perfect faithfulness. I love what the apostle was teaching us. We tell God he's holy, he's worthy, and he is. He knows that. And we tell him that. But you got to get in his holiness and tell him to fill it. And when you tell him, when you're in his holiness, you tell him and you feel it, the full revelation of it, then you give to him your gift, your proof, your, your uniqueness. See, your uniqueness is a gift to God. 
Stop trying to worship like Hillsong. Stop trying to worship like them other Christian bands. Listen to some instrumentals and do your own worship. Make your own sound. Make your own words. Make your own song. Make your own cry. And let God hear your uniqueness. Again, this reminds me of like every sound I'm hearing is so potent. And everybody's getting blessed that's coming by my street. Anybody that walks on the street right now, they gonna get hit with the glory of the Lord. But let me tell you something, now it's time to release. Now that I'm gone deeper, I can release deeper. I tried to release deeper, it was on my mind, it wanted to be released, but now that I'm deeper, see there's spiritual principles and spiritual codes and spiritual access points and you ain't gotta figure out every detail. The Holy, see the Holy Spirit is the ultimate engineer the ultimate organizer, the ultimate date planner, the ultimate ingredient. So when you let him flow, oh my gosh, flow. He was released without me having to say it. Oh, Jesus. You've elevated me. You've chosen me. You've allowed me to walk in such a deep realm with you. You've, you've oh my gosh. You allow me to feel heaven. You, I, I mm, you just, yeah. Just, you know, you always want to say sorry because God's so holy, and the Lord's like, nah, you tripping. And that's not how you glorify me. It is your right. I've said you're worthy because of the blood that my son poured out for you. That makes you worthy. You have a rightful position. You have to enter my glory, to enter his presence, to enter his praise. You have the right to rights. So you gotta start acting like that. For all the masters of life, for all the great philosophers of life, for all the completionists of life, look, look, look what it says. Your loving kindness is better than life. When you sing and you adore and you sip and love on his loving kindness, which there's actually times it even tells you in the Bible when his loving kindness is open for all humanity. There's time he's in the wrong. Look at that. His loving kindness is better than life. It's better than life. See, loving kindness is who God is. He can give you power. He can create worlds. He can create dinosaurs. He can elevate you, bless you. But his loving kindness is who he is. And that's better than life. Mm. My lips shall praise you. There's a code in your lips. Not just your tongue and your lips. You didn't know that. He said, my lips will praise you. There's a code in your lips. There's a blueprint you have. Okay? There's a code in your lips. It opens vaults. You know, before we were excited about treasure chests, and we still are, we're excited about everything. The Holy Spirit won't let you lose any excitement. He won't let you get bland, but now we're opening up vaults. And because you decided to lay down your life for Christ, you're able to touch the world, change the world. You just sitting in a chair speaking. Today is going to be a good day, and I still have a whole nother day. I may not even be at my job tomorrow. See, okay, and I've heard many people teach this, but now I'm experiencing it deep in the spirit. You got to get deep in God's presence. Then prophesy. Then decree the financial abundance. Then claim the, I don't, I'm not going to even say I don't know because I do, God knows, but you got to get deep in his presence. We always decree and clear. I do all the time. That's what we're supposed to. We read the word, but you got to get deep. deep. Deep, deep in his presence. Then do all that. You will immediately see change. Because it's the spirit of the Lord, not by might, not by strength. Power is connected to strength. Prophecy, all that might, strength. That's connected to the might and strength of God. But it's his spirit. Got to get deep in his spirit. Going. I'm gonna go 
all day. Because I'm not going, I don't just want to, I'm already getting changed, but I'm not satisfied with that. I want to get over change. I want to go so deep now. Well, maybe well, probably by tomorrow, I'm in a ministry, I'm in a car, I'm in a yacht, I'm traveling the world. Mm -hmm. It's important to get deep. Satan knows, get the churches only an hour long, give him some entertainment because he knows what can happen if you get deep in God's presence. He knows. Mm. Oh my gosh, God is so good, man. God is fight. He's serious. I love God. I love God. You have to worship him on another level now. You have to, before you were like, oh, God's good, and you were basing it off because of your past. Oh, that's a revelation I just got. You say God's good, and you were basing it off your past, you know, your struggles, but instead of basing it off who he is, who you are, it's all about identity. It's all, all these books, all this stuff, all these prophets, all about identity. The pillar of identity. So, 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 yeah. Creation keys, creation points. But you, oh Lord, are a shield for me. So look, you are, I just saw a door, a lining of a door. You open the door with your fist. I'm seeing crystal and gold and heavenly light. We're reaching in and absorbing. It's not the crystal. It's the feet of Jesus. It emanates from the light all the way to the third heaven. All the way to God is that I'm receiving. God's radiance and brilliance is through. There are reflections in his creation. And he must see. Let's capture. Look, 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 look. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield. You see a shield of God, and you, you start saying, every arrow the devil will ever throw at me, the shield of God is there to prevent it. Every attack, every sword, the shield of God is always there. Whenever you're being tempted with lust, sexuality, anything, say this over and over. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord of God. When we're in spiritual warfare, we base things off ourselves. But when we base it off God, because Satan don't realize, lest we're ignorant of who we are, when he comes against us, he's coming against God. He still doesn't know that, even though we say that. See, a lot of things we say, and he still doesn't know. He hears, but he doesn't know because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. But he doesn't know. When he comes against me, he's coming against God. When he comes against me, he's coming against God. So it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You know, Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, he spoke the word of God, and he directed to God. He says, see, you trying to tempt God. You trying to go against the order, the establishment, the legalistics of God. And so devil know, hey, I have no choice but to flee. A lot of times we base spiritual warfare on ourselves. Where he has dope, where he has a domain, where he has a region he's captured in. He can get twisted and he can fight that. But God is my shield. The earth is of the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein, and the fullness. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. You know, you can use your mind and the spirit and go back to creation and see what the Lord did. 
when you don't try, it happens. When you stop trying to see, you see. Who shall ascend? This is a really good one right here. This one is much deeper than I know. It says there is a dark void and emptiness for God. It says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who see that? I'm starting to see locations in the spirit. The devil don't want that. Demons take notice of that because you're getting somewhere. You're taking over locations and regions in the heavens. Because the Lord. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? So there is actually a hill of the Lord. There's a location to that. There's actually an actual hill. There's a place where that is. And there's an ascension that takes place. Or who shall stand? See, you can sit before God, kneel before God, but it says, who shall stand in his holy place? He's counted worthy to stand. You, because you're in Christ. You have to know who you are in Christ to do that, though. A lot of people are like, why does God give him that, that if we're all in Christ? No, because you don't know who you are in Christ. So you're not sitting as a priest and king of God. Not because he know he knows who he is. That's why he's operating in who he is. He's operating in his identity. You don't know who you are. That's why you're not ru ruling like a king, reigning like standing on the holy mountain, because you don't know who you are. Not because he's special. You're not. You just don't know who you are. Oh my gosh. I'm in the presence of God. Thank you. Mm. I'm in the presence of God. Always tell what you feel. A lot of pastors don't do this. Always tell what you feel. I feel the presence of God. You're expressing, and by doing that, it will increase, and His presence will get stronger. No, 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 no. I'm getting revelation right now. I'm getting downloads. Who shall ascend? This video is going to be like two hours. I ain't going to stop. Man, I still got a bunch of coffee left. Man, we going to be good, brother. We're going to go so deep. Mm. My heart don't hurt no more. Lust has no place in you, devil. Lust has no place in you, devil. I am married to the glory of God. I am married and filled with the passion and pleasure of Jesus. I don't just believe that. I know that. I don't just know that. I feel that. You start talking crazy like that, devils will back up. But right now, I just noticed something. We're gaining access into the spirit. We're starting to discover locations. And in our discoveries, we're able to bring them to earth. The devil don't want you having territory. He doesn't want you locating things. You can't stop it, though. God is protecting you so strong right now. You don't let people come to your house and stay unless God tells you to. This is your sanctuary. This is your tabernacle. You don't, you're not a bad Christian because you don't let people live. You ain't supposed to let nobody unless it's God telling you to. I don't let people live with me. I don't just give anybody money. You crazy? Mm -mm. It's the Lord tells me. It's the Holy Spirit shows me. I'm not going to feed your evil lust. I'm not going to feed your evil desire. I'm not going to give you an opportunity to go, okay? The Lord tells me. I tell everybody about Jesus. I prophesy. I go out there and preach, but this is my inner sanctuary with the Lord. This is my tabernacle. This place is holy. One time, my friend, the Lord will allow me to release this. Yeah, he brought he brought, he brought brought some drugs over to my house. The devil was moving on him, but for certain people, God will always allow you to hang out with They're your best friends, but I have a holy of holies in that room I was in. I was like, brother, if you go in there, you will die. Please do not go in that place. With that stuff. You will literally die. See, people play with God's holiness, and it's not that God's bad. You remember when the I don't have the exact scripture of who was it was in Kings, they were carrying, they were carrying the covenant. He touched the covenant and died, 
And David, and then why would he let, why did God let him die? He loved God. He was serving God. He, he couldn't figure it out. But he went against God's holiness because he lacked knowledge. He had no choice but to die. God didn't kill him. He killed himself. You cannot play with the holiness of God. It'll kill you. People don't understand that. God knows that, so he doesn't just bring anybody in. Okay? Trying to bring everybody to Christ, but he ain't just going to that holy place. That brother didn't have a reverence, he didn't have a respect, and he didn't have a, so he didn't have a knowing, he didn't have an intimacy, so he didn't have the fear of the Lord. See, when you have the fear of the Lord, you can enter into holy missions, super duper holy missions. You can go into deep, 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 deep missions. And because we have Christ, we have access to all that. But as you know this, as you reverence the Lord, your access goes deeper. We all, have, we all have access to the throne of God. The bottom line, when you know who you are in Christ, you're able, if you don't know where the location is, how are you going to access it? Okay? What not to say to someone who's been hurt by the church. You need to learn from other pastors, okay? Please. People that have been in the ministry 20 years, you've only been doing this four years. People in the ministry 20, 30 years, I don't care what you think, how, if they're right, they're wrong. If you agree, don't, none of all that is carnal. You need to sit down and let them teach you. Couch. I love what Brian Carn says. Couch. He got the power guy. He promised him. He need couch. He need to sit down and be taught. He needs counseling. Couch. I need a couch. I need a couch. Romosi erebi remoto te kenda, remato to si kara bar mosia, remoso to te erema lele le mi roko kava ya haramosia kama, remandi elele bi roko remi vitere le bisha tere lama, repore pika le roko si. Oh, let's go, let's go, because I was getting deep revelation right there. I love God because a lot of people don't understand this about me or even the Holy Spirit. They're so, f and yes, you focus. How do I say this the right way, Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit broadens everything you'll start talking about one thing and the holy spirit will go here and here and here he's giving you this perspective of god's mind this revelation this key this discovery location all at one time mm. the sound is marvelous right now like my sound is literally ultra high definition mm. yeah but the holy spirit takes me here here he always does that with me when i don't try to explain to people i'm able to flow because he's giving me all these puzzle pieces at one time. All these revelations at one time. All these perspectives at one time. All these downloads at one time. Because as you increase in the Lord, expand, broaden, you can receive more at one time. Mm -hmm. I just saw a water droplet. And fire. Ladder, Jacob's ladder. See, see, oh, I just got a revelation. See, Jacob's ladder, he didn't realize God was in this place. But when your realization, your realization is a ladder. When you have a realization, God is in this place. God wants to use this person. The Holy Spirit is attracted to this person's music. God has compassion on this person. It'll be a ladder. And a heaven will open up over there. And you'll get great downloads, insights, and keys to pray. To touch that person. There's nothing like touching another human soul with God. Nothing like it. Hold on, let's go back. See, the Lord doesn't ever just limit you. You can go wherever you want in God's world. You can you want to go, you want to travel here in heaven, you want to travel here in heaven, you want to experience, you can experience whatever you want. Oh, you it's yours, it's yours. Don't you start getting blurry on me, brother. I command you. What is it called? Yeah, 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 you better. You better obey me. Even the tech, even the internet has to obey me right now. I'm deep in the spirit. It always obeyed you, what you decreed. It always happened, but you just weren't deep in the spirit to see the manifestation. God just gave me that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You spoke it. It already it did happen. It obeyed you. You weren't deep in the spirit to see the manifestation. You weren't deep in the spirit to see the manifestation. You weren't deep in the spirit to see the manifestation. The decree ain't even broken. <clears throat> Let's go 
We're finishing our breakfast now. So, Lord, so we walk down your tabernacle at your gates as we go into lunch. Mm, I see a bunch of Holy Ghost sandwiches stacked up. You know, you know what I do on my fasting? <laughs> You're going to love this. And it works, it works, it works. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Hold on. See, you know a person's deep in the spirit, anybody, it's not just for, everybody operates different, but when you're deep in the spirit, you're not yelling anymore, you're not shouting, you're not, you're not screaming, that's the power of God, shouting, screaming, bucking, destroying demonic powers, prophecy, you know what I'm saying, so that's the power of God, I love the power of God, but when you're deep in the spirit, what, every spider coming against me? What is a spider's weakness? So when you see images, it's a representation of Satan or his thought against you. And as God has shown me all these things, I'm destroying these things with these. It's amazing how demons, yeah, yeah, hold on, let me destroy this. Fire, fire. I loose the fire of God against you. See, you loose the fire, I just loose the fire of God against the spider. That spider dead, but there's a web, there's eggs, their intentions towards me. So if I just in the spirit just loose fire on that, he's dead. There's more to come. So this is what we do. The Holy Spirit will show you and tell you what to do. I loose the fire of God. Actually, I hatched those, I hatched those eggs with an untimely birth, and I loose the fire of God on them. And their strand, the DNA, off me. And because you're deeper in the spirit, you can go further. Because you're further in the spirit. And I loose the fire, and I break it off my entire bloodline. See, now my entire bloodline will not have to deal with no arachnid spirit because I broke it. The Holy Spirit in me broke it. You know, I just got a revelation. We're so afraid to say I, but when you know who you are in Christ and you say I am, see Moses, I was watching this video and I gained, oh my gosh, it's called the Moses Code. And it's called, the, I, the whole thing is I am that I am. When Moses asked God, who do I say sent me? Why would God say, I am? When you say, I am, that I am, that's so deep I can't even explain it. Matter of fact, that's so deep I can't even express it because that's a name of God. That's who God is. Okay? I'm not even going, I'm not even going to try. God's too holy. Yeah, I, I heard in the Jew, Jewish, um, Go back to the prophecy. This girl said there was, you're going to get married. You're going to write books. But you need to study the Jewish roots. And you, and, you, and you need to ask God to give you the realization of the favor he's put on your life. Come on, God. God has put a special favor on my life. There's something special the Lord has put on you. When you see a man prophesying, when you're, when you don't understand... You'll see the man prophesying, the Lord has put a special favor amongst you and amongst you from your brothers. They think, wait a minute, God's showing him favoritism. No. There's a certain specialty on him. There's also a certain specialty on his brothers. But he's being pulled forward by the prophet because he has served God faithfully. When you serve God faithfully, he will bring you forth himself. He'll use a prophet, an apostle. Just like we got this revelation when they were choosing David to be king. They, chew, they, they brought all these other men, but they excluded David. He's weird. He's just this, he'd be serving the lambs, and he'd be, he's got a harp. He's weird. My pastor was saying this, and I got a revelation while he was visually explaining it. And they were looking at all these guys that were strong, big. They looked like businessmen. They looked great, like they were going to be the king. Nah. But then the man of God said, none of these are it. But when he saw David, the Holy Ghost, God rose in him. He said, this. Lord, Pastor, I'm coming back to you. I'm going to uplift you. <laughs> you can't fail if you let the Holy Ghost be the boss of everything. Because the Holy Ghost can't fail. I, I can't fail. It's impossible for me to lose faith. It's because the Holy Spirit's in control. Hmm, let's, go, let's, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Look, he that hath clean hands... When you have clean hands, you can touch. 
the dishes of God. The blood of Jesus makes your hands clean. But when you're living in sin, you're stepping out. Doesn't mean you don't have access. You have access to what everybody else has access in Christ. There's no specials, but sin, you have to understand, it's the identity crisis. When we beg God for money, we're stepping out of our identity. When we go to God like as beggars, we step out of our identity. Doesn't mean we, we don't have all the access to the heavenly riches, but we're stepping out of our identity. Stop stepping out of your identity. It's like a heavenly belt, garment, heavenly garment. And there's bowls of praises in this garment. It's like the prayer shawl. You put your face in it, you absorb it. Tears of God. He felt your pain, felt your struggle. It was him crying through you. Now that makes you become one with God on a level that you already had access to. You just didn't realize, so you didn't experience it. And you didn't activate it. Just like there's shutters. If you don't have the key code, you can't enter the shutter. Go deeper in the ship. Go deeper in exploration. Go to deeper levels. But you have the code. It's Jesus. You just haven't used it. I have spent the last few years of my life like really alone, like, like, I don't know, I don't want to use the word isolation, but I have spent years alone with God and mm, horn of cistern, drink from it. I drink from it. Mm. What? I've been trying to figure out how to do this forever. I was watching YouTube videos of this 4K camera, and they had all these options to zoom in like this, zoom back, but I couldn't figure it out. And now it just automatically happened out of nowhere. That's what happens when you're in the spirit. Everything you've been trying to figure out is figured out. Everything you've been trying to get right just gets right. Everything you've been trying to organize just gets organized. All the issues, all the money, all the doubt. As a matter of fact, right now, I decree and decree. I'm going to start to hold off before we end this video because it's already an hour 20. I'm, I'm going to go to the fourth quarter. You know how the NBA has four quarters? Well, we're going to do four quarters and we're going to win the championship title in Christ. I decree and declare over my, what is it called? I don't even know physical things right now. As a matter of fact, you ain't even got to de decree and declare. I'm going to make it all happen because you got deep in my spirit. Hold on, let's go back. How did that happen? Awesome. Oh, okay. Okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. I can't wait for my brother to come over. It's the will of God for him to come over. The Lord really wants me to just mentor him, shine on him, and just pray over him and just love on him. If I can do that, then I can... Really be in God's supreme will, not just his perfect will. See, it's the Father's will for me to be at my mama's house, learn how to drive. It's the Father's will right now. Wait a minute, God finna give me a new job. I'm telling you, he finna give me a new job. Hey, hey, we, hey, 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 I like that, Jesus. You see, oh, Jesus, God finna give me a new job. Thank you for the new job you've given me. Thank you for the new job you've given me. Thank you that debt is wiped off. Supernaturally. Thank you for the hundred and four promise. Mmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is anointing you. Anointing us. Remember, as you watch these videos, I'm not making these videos for me. I'm just here to express God, but you getting blessed as you watch this. Trust me. Whatever I always, in my mind, in my prayers, over these videos, whatever I have, it, I, 
I ask God to release it to you times 10, times 20, more. I want you to get more. I want you to have what I have times more. I want you to get blessed. I love Jesus. Hold on, hold on. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Right, right there. Okay, so the Lord is elevating you. Release from the cold of passion. My, my, my. My sexuality is being so purified from the pollution and the lust and beginning to have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit on a divine, deeper level. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. The Holy Spirit cannot compare. You know, women are beautiful, but the Holy Spirit is beauty. He is beauty. Mm. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. You about to hear a knock on your door. Jesus is knocking on that ancient door. Can I open it right now? Oh, he just barked in my heart. He's giving God the glory and praise on my behalf. look in my eyes, I see Jesus. Look in your eyes, you see Jesus. That's the key. When I look in my eyes, I see Jesus. That's the portal. When I look in my eyes, I see Jesus. Just to meditate, not just to think, to see him.